Hey there, welcome back. My name is Steve, and this is my devlog series, in case you're new. Um, so in, in this video, I'm going to share my level design workflow, and I'm basically just going to choose a small task and go through the process that I go through when I work on it. So the first thing I do is uh, use Perforce. I, I use Perforce, so I make sure all of my latest work is submitted. That way, in case I break anything or make a change that I don't like, I could just revert it. Um, and yeah, I, I basically load into the editor and I drive around using my controller and kind of at this point, what I'm doing is checking out the occlusion calling and seeing how optimized it is. So like from this view, I could see all of a bunch of landscape over there. Um, so maybe I can move some buildings around or adjust the terrain a little bit to, to be able to block out some of that. So th that's kind of my primary goal going into this. But what I, what I usually do is I'll, at this point, I'll, I'll zoom out and I'll just get an idea of how much is not being blocked. And we could see that that corner is just an offender. So all of that. I, I would love to have that just be open, but I, I kind of just want to keep the performance in check. So for right now, I'm just going to obscure it. And I think on this side too, specifically, yeah. It's a little rough. Now when we go into here, it's super optimized. Um, there's just this road and some buildings here. From this view, I could see a lot. There's a hole somewhere. I think it's that right there. I'm not sure. So pretty much that's what I'm going to focus on. Um, so at this point, I've I've driven around the scene and I've noticed that there's just a bunch of stuff being drawn in the distance that the player really doesn't even see. So I'm just going to obscure it and um, I'll load into my art scene. So all of the, the actual geometry for the game is in this scene. And what I have here is I have a mini map. I'll just go ahead and disable this. The way this mini map is set up, it's just a plane and I take a top down screenshot of the scene and apply it as to a, to a material. And that's basically it. So I'll disable that. So it's not in my way. And this is basically the area that I need to focus on. So now I don't really care about the buildings that are going to be over here. So I can just duplicate one of the ones I have. I also have a, a ton of buildings that are just all random, different types of buildings in this array. It's so if I had wanted to pick a specific style, I could just enable them and kind of just go and look at a bunch and modify them from there. These are all procedural buildings, so um, kind of any one of them could end up looking like any of the other ones, as long as you change the settings. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to raise up the, the terrain a little bit. Um, So I initially used Gaia to stamp out this terrain. And at this point, I'm just kind of just going to make some changes. So what I would do is just sample the height and then raise this height over here using just like a a noise brush. 
And actually, I think it would be cool if this just led into like maybe a tunnel on the other side. That would be cool. So I'll I'll raise it up over the road, and there will just be a tunnel that the bridge ends up going into. I want to put some a lot of different tunnels and pathways around. Um, I just think that would be cool. So all this, and then I'll smooth this out later. Right now, I I really don't care about. The shape of it too much. I'm just kind of blocking something out and raising it up so that it's just blocking stuff in the distance. I'll actually just use the Gaia Smooth command when I'm ready and it'll, it'll smooth that out a lot. And I am burying a piece of road there. Um, let me just go ahead and disable that so I don't forget it's buried. I haven't really gone to that side of the island yet. Okay, so for now that, that should just help a little bit. Um, I don't know what it's going to eventually end up looking like, but that'll be higher ground. And at least for this area of the city, it'll, it'll help block when the camera looks at from this direction. You won't see anything. I mean, you'll, you'll see a bunch of hills now, and chances are those are going to be brought down considerably based on just whatever design I end up coming up with. Um, so then, yeah, I guess I'm done with the terrain. Just wanted to get some stuff out in the distance. Grab one of these buildings and just duplicate it. I could go with this style in, in this area. I was thinking that all of these buildings are the same design because just different shapes. Um, sometimes college campuses and, and things like that are done in that manner. So yeah, that, that might actually make sense. And it just allowed me to cover a fairly large area pretty quickly and cheaply. Um, Anyway, I'll, on this side, I'll just put different buildings. So these are all in the grass system. I'm going to have to change that area. Otherwise, there's just going to be grass inside of the building. It's the one thing I don't like about Vegetation Studio. Gaia lets you, when it spawns the grass, it'll basically respect the area around the buildings and the road like it won't spawn inside of there but with vegetation studio when you just want grass spawn by default and trees by default like nothing crazy it, it doesn't it's like it doesn't know the the geometry exists so we'll have to manually grab one of the masks and yeah this is so I'll take these areas and, and just move them. And now the grass is only, only in that area. So in here I have, you could insert nodes. So control and click inserts nodes. So I'll just do that to build up the outer area again. Um, I 
I don't know if the way the gizmo is drawing that, if it's complaining about that. It's weird. I'll just try adding more. I wanted to try to bring it around the front, but yeah, I, I don't think that it, I'm just, I'll just make another area instead of that. So I could delete these nodes, control shift. Yeah, so that's the only thing I don't like about this asset is that to just quickly get grass where you want, you have to either do that or I, I know that there's a bunch of other settings that you could do more complex stuff, but going the easy route is mostly what I wanted to do. So now I'll just have the new area. I don't know if this area will actually ever be seen either, so. But I do want to pull it back down to this area. All right. So again, I'm not really paying much attention to details. I think in the end, what I'm probably going to do is uh, just manually plant everything. They have some kind of persistent storage, so I'll use the default terrain and just manually plant everything. And then I, I believe you could bring that vegetation setup over into a profile. Um, but for right now, as I'm blocking everything out, I'd I think I just want to want to do it that way. So then these buildings, what's cool is like they have all of these gizmos on each of their faces. You could just grab them and basically resize them. Um, couldn't see that blue one. So if I wanted this closer to the road, I I can do that. Um. And this one over here, actually, see, so I want to, this building, I, I want to pull off to the side, make it longer. So I, get, I have to adjust the vegetation again. And, yeah, so let me find that mask. I would prefer it to be a different way. I don't know if having more nodes is more or less performant friendly. I have no clue. But pulling it that way should help. Probably make that building a little longer too. Actually, I'm just going to pull this farther down. Uh, get those red lines crossing again. Eh, I don't care. Um, Okay, so those are just seascape warnings. Um, all right, that'll do. And hmm.
don't think I need that node. Actually, let's just get rid of all these back here. I don't really care. The player can't even see that right now. Now the great thing about Vegetation Studio is that it's super optimized and it uses the job system burst compiler for rendering. So you only see what the camera can see. Sometimes this, these buildings act weird when you use the gizmos. Alright, so now I got a building blocking more of this and creating more of a corridor. You can still see some landscape from here, but I think as the car turns, then you can't see as much. Um, it's better shows less and then also this building was extended so I should block that out I actually think you know what I'll extend this out even more this time I'm just going to use the smooth brush and change its size and this is what I want to extend out. Mostly just this piece right here. Don't know if I'll do anything else with it, but I want to completely block that view if possible. So now when the player car comes through here, none of the terrain behind that view can be seen. And as they're coming around this bend, they're going to be turning right. So the only time that will be visible is from here. And that'll probably be going into a mountain. So that vista might be pretty cool. I'm going to see if what I can do with it, but hmm. and that's about it. So, I mean, at this point I've made some changes to the terrain. I'll play with the vegetation a little bit more. I built up this area a little bit. Oh, I, I think I need to, so, so the vegetation studio won't, it's using the splat map and I use Gaia to generate the splat texture. So right now it's not, I'll actually go through and, and use the Gaia thing to update it. Let me just. Move this. Okay, so then I'll grab the Gaia stuff. I have that disabled, so I'll just enable it. And we got the session manager, the stamper, all that good stuff. So, what I want is the coverage texture spawner. So, when I click on, first of all, when I click smooth, all of these like random shapes that I just stamped down, I could smooth. 
smooth them out a little bit. Um, I'll just do one for now. But eventually I'll, I'll smooth out the terrain a good amount, and any details that I put into the terrain rocks, they'll be made from actual meshes. So at this point I, I'm just going to spawn new textures. And that, that'll probably take about a minute to complete. Um, so what it's going to do is it's going to basically update all of the textures and create a new splat map based on the different terrain elevations, so the shape of the terrain. So since this is all flat right here, it's going to become grass and dirt instead of rock. And then the vegetation is allowed to spawn in that area. I believe that's what's going to... Well, I believe Vegetation Studio will just automatically update based on that. Yeah, we're 16% complete. And you know what? I actually want to come and put another building over here while that's doing that. So I'll just... I actually want to put some along the side, but it's just going to be more of the same stuff, so... Um, I'm not going to stay in the video for that long. I, I don't think anybody wants to keep seeing me do that. But yeah, so I'll pull this building over here. And I'll actually make this one... I mean, if you do want me to keep doing more and you want to see me just keep going, let me know. Um, it's not hard to turn on the camera and just do this. So now that'll that'll block a lot. And again, I'll bring that building up. So now this whole corridor is it's pretty solid. Um, I will have to adjust that vegetation. Let's see. So what I'll probably do is just pull these back and just create a new mask in the front area. Right. Let's see how that texture spawner is doing. 40%. So, while we're waiting for that, I'll drag another mask down. And set up some more grass for the stuff that just disappeared. Alright, and there we go. So now this entire path should be just a lot more optimized. Um, and it still has some cool openings. So that texture spawner should be pretty close to being done. Yep, there it is. It just finished. And now there's no vegetation here. What's up? I wonder why. Does that have to do with the shape? Hmm. 
I will have to play with that and figure out what's up with that. Um, probably has something to do with the splat map. But I thought that this created... Yep, I'll have to look into that. But anyway, so th that's basically what I do. And then once I'm I'm done with all of this, I'll I'll just disable Gaia. Um I'll leave the minimap disabled. I will find my occlusion culling asset in my project folder which is in this open world. And I have experienced some weird issues with it, so I will actually, like, I, I don't think it automatically gets checked out from Perforce, so I manually check out that. Might as well. I didn't bake any. I don't remember baking any lighting data or anything. Yeah, it's not set to auto-generate. Well, that's for the open world scene. Um, but yeah, I still don't remember baking any of that. Anyway, so I'll I'll check those out too. Uh, version control. Check out. So now they're all marked red. That means they're checked out. If we go into Perforce and we refresh it, we could look at our change list. And basically, these are all the assets that have changed. Uh, I have the lighting data, the occlusion culling data, the reflection probe, the the terrain that we're using, some kind of Gaia data, and the the art scene doesn't show up here yet because I didn't save it. I'll go ahead and save it. Once that's done saving, that'll be in the Perforce list and I'm just showing you the list just so you could see it so yeah now we have the art scene in here too so as you make changes to assets they usually get checked out and and then if you don't like your changes then you revert them and then all of the, the changes that you made obviously go back to the previous state which is pretty cool and if you introduced a bug you could go through like you have all of your version history so Let me see. So here's some history. I'm on uh, 373 for this project. So that's how many changes I've submitted since I put this particular project into into this version control repo. Um, and that's just on another computer that's on my network. And then I, I back that computer up to the Synology that's also on my network. I don't have an off-site backup. I, I, maybe I should probably get one, but <laughs> anyway, um, so at this point I have all of the files that I need checked out. I'll just go to occlusion calling. I'll clear the data. Yeah. So even though you clear the data, well, so the thing is like, actually when I do the bake, what I need to do is The way it, the way I've set this up is I go into the open world scene first and and bake that scene. So bef what I'm actually baking is I'm also uh, the open world doesn't have any content in it, but the open world art does. That's the only scene. So the open world has scripts and logic in it. And the art scene basically has all of the geometry. There's no AI cars in that scene. It's literally just geometry, vegetation, geometry. Um, so I have the open world, the open world art, and I also bring the level one race scene. That's the only scene that has content in it. But again, there's no geometry in that scene. So the only scene that actually has geometry is open world art. And I'll, I'll just clear all of them. 
Actually, yeah, so not now that data did delete. Maybe it didn't delete. Maybe I just did something different that time. I don't know. Or maybe it didn't delete if it wasn't checked out. But anyway, so I cleared the data for all three of the scenes. When they all get baked together, all of that data goes into that one open world occlusion calling data file that was just deleted. So now I'll just hit bake. Hey there, so the bake just finished and I've already saved the scenes. All I had to do was right click and select save all. And now at this point, um, I, I also was looking into this area a little bit. It looks like after the scene was loaded, Vegetation Studio must have recognized that there was a new splat map. It likely caches it on startup or something. Anyway, there's grass here, so it all worked out. Um, let me go ahead and load back into the open world. And I'll go ahead and press play. You know, we could drive around and take a look at the occlusion calling visualization and just kind of see what it looks like. All right, so here we go. Let me drag the scene view back over. Yeah, so I, from all the way back here, I can still see that whole road landscape. I don't know what I'll do with that. It might not even be an issue. So I'm, I'm not super worried about that right now. But I kind of want to experiment with pulling up the height of that building. Hey, that guy rammed me. He was supposed to stop. Anyway. Um, yeah, so this is the area that we optimized. So off to the left, I, I can't see anything anymore because there's a building here. And the left side is still pretty optimized. The forward view is also a bit more optimized. Um, yeah, I think raising up the height of that building We'll stop that distant terrain from popping. So off to the left of the car right now, there used to be a, a bunch of terrain being rendered there, and that just doesn't happen anymore. So yeah, I, I feel like it's an improvement. Um, Maybe I'll create some kind of hill over here or something to obscure the view a little bit more. But, but yeah, that's, that's a slight improvement, and I have some more content in here. So I guess the next step would be to go to the other end of this edge piece over here. Because I could see, uh, I could still see stuff, well... Not too much. Not as much as I was able to before, but looks like there's still some pieces that are popping through. I could put some buildings over here too, but yeah, right here is just so much better than it was before. There was a lot more off to the side. So that helps. All right, cool. So at that point, I've tested my changes. They seem to be working. I'm happy with them. I'll pop open Perforce and I'll just submit some changes. Um, I'll just type work in progress open world. So submit it and that's about it. At this point I spent about an hour in the project updated some stuff. I normally wouldn't bake that much. I like I, I would do more work before I would bake. I would probably spend a few hours playing with it, but this was just like a demonstration to show you what the workflow was like. If you like it, let me know. If you don't, you can let me know too. Um, but yeah, thanks for checking it out and thanks for your interest. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.